So here we are guys, we're going to be testing the dual battery setup for the wired cruiser. I got my 60 volt battery, the 25 amp hour, and I have the stock battery over there. We're going to undo some wiring underneath this bike near the controller and get this hooked up. And this is my little creation. So this is a 100 amp battery combiner. It's got some ideal diodes in it to prevent backflow from one battery into another. And what I had to do was snip off the XD90 connectors and add some XD60s. Um, I did the best soldering job I could. It was pretty bad. I covered it in electrical tape to spare myself the embarrassment. Uh, but what I also wired in were some DC circuit breakers. These are 30 amp each and they sit in between the batteries, in between the battery and the combiner. And that's because I do not want to draw more than 60 amps into the motor and the controller because I don't know if the controller could handle so many amps. Uh, I already opened it up and by default on the label, it's rated for 20 amps, the controller that sits in this box. And what they did, I'll add an image to this video. What they did was they actually added some solder to the shunts to bring it up to 40, which is actually what I'm gonna do later. I'm adding more solder into this, but uh, what this is gonna do is two things. Number one, it's gonna allow me to sort of switch off the batteries so they're completely disconnected from each other and I can charge them safely individually without any kind of back current, without stressing this out in case one of the chargers fails and one of the batteries starts to get higher and higher in capacity. It won't stress this out. It's trying to stop backflow into the other, the other battery. And it's gonna allow me for a easy, quick disconnect in case I ever wanna take the batteries off. I don't have to deal with these XT60 connectors arcing and sparking around because these circuit breakers they have anti-arc uh, devices in them that saves the uh, not only the circuit breaker but it saves the um, the connectors and it just keeps everything nice and, and orderly and tidy so these are safety mechanisms in case this pulls more than 60 amps one of these is going to shut off I just want to point something out guys that I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to electronics. I'm figuring this stuff out on the fly. I could be completely wrong with my whole plan on the circuit breakers and them limiting how much, how many amps the whole unit draws. I could be completely wrong. If you guys have any input and comments as to how I can improve this, please let me know. Uh, one, for all I know, one uh, battery could be drawing more power than the other and it would keep breaking uh, the circuit breaker. I don't know, I have no idea, but you guys let me know. And I also wanna mention that if you guys want any of these parts, I'm gonna leave a list of them in the comments below. If this is something that you guys wanna do, uh, I'd recommend it. And if you wanna just do a basic battery blender, I would actually recommend using the Fusion battery blender. I think it's a much better value than the Datex 2 battery blender. Those things are way overpriced. I don't know how they get away with it. It's gotta be, it's gotta have gold in it, I swear to God, I don't know. But I'd recommend the Fusion Battery Blender. I think it's a great product if you just want two batteries. But if you wanna do something high amps, stay tuned and you'll find out if my system does work. <laughs> Uh, these battery BMS's are made for 40 amps, but I do not want to put 80 amps at 60 volts into this Motor that would be way too much. So yeah guys, let's see how it goes. Here's the first test run All right guys, so we are Successful everything worked out. Okay, and nothing exploded in my face and burned out Circuit breakers work. I text tested them out in case you guys are curious the place to unplug the controller from the default stock battery is underneath. Got a couple XT60 connectors. So next up, what we're gonna do is just wire everything in nicely, make everything nice and neat, packed up tightly in this step-through cavity. All right, and now for just a little bit of quick dual battery testing, see how this goes. So currently I am running off of two batteries just want to see what the throttle's like. All right. We're getting power, folks.
Guys, we are out here doing some torture testing on the dual battery wired cruiser. As you can tell, I got rid of the casing, for now, of the controller. And everything is exposed. Obviously the motor is exposed, at least the casing is, the controller, the dual battery splitter, the batteries, the circuit breakers, all that stuff. And I did some temperature testing and it turns out the hottest part of all of this and the owner of the company was right. He told me this would happen. The controller gets hot. It gets really hot. And the wire that comes out of the controller that goes into the motor, the main, the main power wire right here, this thing gets really hot also. Uh, both of these get to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The motor is actually colder. Gets to about, um, right now, like 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is a hot day, guys. It is uh, 90 something degrees outside today. So I figure this is a good time to torture test this system and see what kind of temps we get. The battery voltages, they're very similar. I'm running it almost, almost fully charged, 60, 60 volts right now. Split combined between uh, both of these batteries right here. We got about 60 volts and um, yeah, I think it's fairly accurate representation of what a real world situation would be. But I did a bunch of hill climbing, top speed runs for like 10 minutes straight, just non-stop throttle, almost as far, almost as as long as I could, just non-stop throttle. But uh, I want to show you guys kind of how this works. So first, let's turn this off. Check this out. So let's first turn off this battery. And we'll just switch back here. All right. So I turned off the unit power pack battery. And this is this circuit breakers to the main battery. So boom, that's off. And then I've got also another switch back here to the unit power pack battery. Boom, so that's off. So now I have no power to the whole system. Watch me turn this on. It's gonna flash for a brief moment. And that's it, because there's nothing, right? The controller is drained, the capacitor has just got drained the controller. Now there's no power, okay? So let's say I wanna just run one battery only i can flip on the main battery switch right and that's for the big battery right that the bike comes with i could turn this on and if you see here <clears throat> we're at 58.6 volts all right i could turn that off let's say i want to use the other battery all right no disconnecting required flip that off flip the other one on and if you guys see I forgot to turn on the actual battery. I was like, oh, what's going on? I just broke it. Bruh. There we go. So you got to turn the actual battery on. And now, if you guys notice, we're at 59.1 volts because it's a different battery. So no disconnecting required. I can run these separately if I want to. So I'm showing you guys this in case you want to do something similar where you want to run two batteries, maybe not necessarily together, but you want to switch back and forth or have the system where I can easily take batteries off. So I can unplug, I can turn those off and quickly remove this top battery. I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. And one last thing I wanted to show you guys was the mounting mechanism for this battery. Earlier in my last video, I said I would have to learn how to sew so I can get these straps on here and whatnot but uh, and i also said i was going to use a wire cable over here i decided to just use straps and everything and this is going to look even better when i'm done with it but what i did was i put one behind the down tube put the bottom one again like i mentioned it goes over the tube uh, up here over part of the frame and then on this side three straps that wrap around the entire frame and if you guys look at this the belt buckle or the buckles are right here, quick latches. So all I have to do to get rid of all of these batteries is just turn off the breakers, okay? Make sure they're disconnected. Disconnect the XT60 connector so it's safe to disconnect, right? And reconnect later. And then all I have to do is unlatch this, unlatch those, and this comes right off. And then obviously I can use the key to remove this battery. So I can get rid of these batteries very quickly in under a minute if I need to put this bike on my car rack for transport, make it lighter for lifting, whatever it is, and then I can easily put it all back on. And 
I want to reiterate, this is all temporary. Everything is going to look much better uh, once I'm done with it. But so far, so good. Everything fits okay. The only thing that I probably will change, I'm still trying to figure out how to cool this controller because when I took it for a test drive uh, today, I did some torture testing and stress testing on it. It got really hot. It got up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the controller world, I don't know that much, but I did some research and that's not that hot. However, this wire that goes to the motor, I think this is called a phase wire. This also got to about 120 degrees. So this thing gets pretty hot, right? Especially when it comes out from under the controller, it's about 130 degrees over there. So I don't know what I'm gonna do for cooling. I did uh, do a little bit of research on the um, DIY e-bike forums and people were saying to replace the thermal paste in this controller. I might do that. I also might make a small cutout, open this out and put the fan that I was originally gonna put here, blowing this way, just straight into the controller and out and down. I know ideally it's better to have a fan blowing upwards and or in from the bottom and out from the top just because that's how uh, hot air naturally rises, but there's wires down there, so I can't really fit something down there. I'll have to figure something out. But uh, yeah, guys, that's the update. So the plan for the next part of this video, I'm gonna be fully charging this as it is right now, and I'm gonna do some performance testing. I'll do some uh, hill climb tests, top speed tests, zero to 20 mile per hour, per hour test, zero to 30, um, and, uh, and get some good numbers of what the stock performance is like. I'm sure you guys already know, watching some other people's videos, watching some reviewers videos on this bike, uh, watching my videos, but just once again, just to get some good comparison shots. And once I do the shunt mod to get more amps into this, I'm gonna do the same exact routes that I tested this bike on, on the stock bike, I'm gonna do the same exact routes that I tested the stock bike with the shunt mod, right? I'll, I'll see how it's how it's different, and that way we can get a direct side-by-side -side comparison and a timer for more accurate, uh, a more accurate representation of just how much power, just how much faster this bike is with the shunt mod versus without it. So stay tuned. That's what's gonna be next. We're doing uh, the exciting part next. We're doing the mod to get more power and we're gonna test the performance, right? And, and guys, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully nothing burns out. Um, for now, I'm gonna keep this, expo this controller exposed. This is all one big heat sink. There's actually hot parts inside of this box that are um, pressed up against the casing, which acts like a big heat sink. Uh, so keeping this exposed right now helps a lot with cooling. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna keep this all exposed um, during the stock testing and during the shunt mod testing. So stay tuned guys.